Okay, I'm gonna start recording. Um, so yeah, so Ty, you had a question for me um, that I have a lot of opinions around and that's something that people at GitLab ask me about a lot. Uh, so I thought it might be just better to just hop on, talk about it sync real quick, but record it and post it for posterity. Okay, good. So yeah, yeah so the, the question was around, you know, we, we you know, GitLab, we, we're very proud of our, our CI, um, but when we're talking Jenkins and, and wanting to know what a, uh, how to go about, uh, you know, a, a company that's using Jenkins and trying to replace that with CI, uh, with GitLab, what are some of the weaknesses that um, GitLab might have against going uh, against Jenkins? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I could, I could talk about this. I, I, I don't consider myself an expert, but I guess I should if I'm the product manager for, for CI, but I don't, I'll pre up preempt the whole thing. This is all biased to my experience, right? Right. Um, but I've used both Jenkins and GitLab CI and actually older tools than both of them, if you can believe it. Um, and, and I have some things I like, of course, about GitLab CI, but I think it's a legit question to say, you know, what, what is it about Jenkins that's going to make it hard, especially for a large enterprise? Um, I, I think it's hard to do a feature by feature comparison because we're, we kind of had very different philosophies. Um, we, we grew up around very different times, right? Jenkins significantly more like older, and I'm not trying to say that as a negative, but it's older than mm -hmm. GitLab CI. And because of that, it had like a view of software development at the time, I think that's kind of baked into it because GitLab CI was built when it was. It has a view of the software development world built <laughs> into it that in 10 years, someone, you know, might say looks old, right? Again, I'm trying not to have old as a negative connotation here um, because old does not mean bad, but um, it, it does, you know, change your vision when you're building something when, when you build it as relevant. So I think the biggest thing, so uh, that's to say feature to feature is hard, uh, but I'll, I'll get into that a little bit, but I think it's hard to do that because like the biggest thing Jenkins has going for it is the fact that it's such an industry standard, right? Like I think most folks would say Jenkins is the industry standard um, right. when it comes to CI. And that, that momentum is, is not, you know, that's important. Like that's, and for a large enterprise that's worried about, you know, shipping reliable code, that's, that's a big deal because if they've spent a lot of time and energy into building um, pipelines for CI and CD that work for them, then it's, it can be hard to say, okay, why would I switch? Or, oh my gosh, am I gonna have to make this up again? Um, and and a, a lot of times what people bring up, and I think this, this kind of helps, is like, and this probably would be the number one feature of Jenkins that I would say that we don't have, which is like the plugin ecosystem, right? right. Um, and it's, it's very, this is, you know, maybe a central place where we diverge in the way we think about the world. Um, you know, we think about single application. If something is valuable for someone, we want it built into the application by default. Um, whereas Jenkins is extensible through plugins and there's a massive world and ecosystem of plugins um, from which you can do anything in the world. So if you want to do, you know, something, <laughs> some specific kind of deployment, interact with some specific system, um, you kind of have two options if you put GitLab and Jenkins out of your mind for a minute. You can take something someone else has done before uh, and leverage it, or you can, um, you know, gain that knowledge for yourself and, and do it yourself. So there's a lot of value, obviously, we're an open source company in the, you know, building on the shoulders of giants that, that you're able to do with open source. Right. And so theoretically plugins are that too, because, oh, if it's how to do this type of deployment, I can just go get a plugin that does it. Um, and that's really great um, in the beginning, um, but can lead to a lot of problems. So there's a couple pages, I was gonna share my screen, there's a couple um, pages about this. One's a Stack Overflow article that's kind of just general, um, and then one's another article from some other third party. Okay. Um, that kind of illustrates this point. So let me just share my screen real quick. Um, so this uh, is a GitLab CI versus Jenkins Stack Overflow post. And the answer is not GitLab on the post. So <laughs> don't worry. The answer is Jenkins uh, in general. Um, but, it's, but it's interesting how and why Jenkins, right? Right. 
Um, and so, so here's this, this person's uh, answer, which I really like. It's very complete. Talks about like kind of all the whole world of CI um, uh, and, and answers a lot, of, a lot of the things, right? So um, Jenkins is easier to learn because it has, but it has the risk of becoming plug in hell, right? Like, so again, I think that if you say, well, GitLab CI, you can start from a Docker image and do whatever you want. Um, that's great, but with Jenkins, it might be, oh, install a plugin. Mm -hmm. um, Jenkins has a, a GUI, right? So, of course, we have a graphical user interface too, but Jenkins traditionally, and when it was originally built, was built with, um, and can you see this? Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little. Yeah, I see, I mean, yeah. Okay, I'm just thinking if we're recording it, sorry. Um, so, Jenkins, when it was first built, was built around, you point and click and say, how do I build my thing, right? And then Jenkins will do the steps that you've clicked in and clone in this way and um, run, you know, this kind of Maven script and, and then publish to this, you know, Maven repository or what, what have you. Um, and so this, this sometimes is a preferred method, but in my experience, it's, it's not the way to move at the speed of modern software delivery, right? Mm -hmm. um, what that leads to is kind of siloed uh, institutional places where someone is the Jenkins admin and now if we want to change slightly the way we're building or deploying we've got to involve a different team that's not our development team right it's a very anti DevOps pattern it's like there's a Jenkins team and there's a development team and they're different yeah. they're at odds right um, and this is this that's what my experience was so when I first joined uh, the company before I joined GitLab <laughs> the company I was at um, I inherited uh, as the kind of uh, director of DevOps there, I inherited uh, the tool chain that we see a lot, right? I heard it inherited Jira to GitLab to Jenkins to Artifactory and Nexus, right, to deployment. Um, and the thing I found was I had engineers working for me that would be spending time configuring stuff in Jenkins or adding another plugin or troubleshooting the difference why two plugins were incompatible or um, uh, adding a new tool in, right? Like we did a lot of Java development there, okay. but a lot of our customers had very specific requirements on Java. So it's like, oh, we have to have Java 17181, or we have to have Java 8, da, 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 right? Right. So we run into issues, like the, the story I always tell from that is the way that you use Java with Jenkins is uh, the administrator of Jenkins installs a tool, what's called a tool, and it's actually a free text field, right? It's a GUI, so it's nice. It's like you can type and say, I want Java, but there's actually a free text field that names it. And someone had installed, again, as I inherited the server, um, someone had installed the JDK and labeled it JRE, which for those in our Java folks, two different distributions of Java, uh, an open source one and the one from Oracle. And the two oftentimes cannot build the other one. Uh, and it was really confusing for my team to try and troubleshoot because the way it was labeled looked like everything was correct. And in reality, we had to dr drill into where the binary was and tell. Versus the GitLab methodology there is build in Docker and start from a Docker image. You could start from the JDK published Docker image, or you could build your own Docker image to build inside of, right? So that, um, that is a big difference. Okay. Um, and then, and so then, but then it so it talks down here about another critical thing, right? Like a long time ago, um, a, a while ago, to be fair, there was this addition of proper CI, this person calls it, and I would agree, of CI and your build as code, right? Like everything should be as code. And so the Jenkins file has that. But again, it's, it's still, I think it, that, that Jenkins world is still trying to decouple the concept of having a configurable user interface with the concept of a portable Jenkins file. Whereas like GitLab, the GitLab CI is the only way it's ever been, right? And so it's, it's super easy to just kind of pick that up and move it. Mm -hmm. um, and says, yeah, but used to be less coupled to the repository, which they bring up as a, as a positive here, right? Jenkins can be split off of your repo. I, I guess there's some benefits to that. I would say that the, the costs outweigh the benefits to that. Um, 
And then I think a lot of the where where plugins, if I was saying what's the advantage that Genius has, comes in this one, right? Like we are still trying to build a lot of reporting and test results and coverage and other static analysis static analysis tools into GitLab. A lot of that was new in 2018 for us. Right. Um, and then being able to see that over time, um, being able to see all the details, that's things that our team is working on this year because I do agree that because you can just pull in a plugin for Jenkins, you know, graph my test results over time, um, that that's a big advantage that they have over us right now. But I think we're going to fix that quickly, quickly close that gap. And I think that the emergent benefits of a single application, again, still outweigh that, but that's probably my get a lot of bias coming into, <laughs> into, into bear. Um, interestingly enough, um, they edited it later and said that they've been working more with GitLab CI recently and then brought up some different things, right? The maintenance is easy, right? I think this is critical for the enterprise, right? Going back to my example, uh, earlier of uh, my previous role is I would walk into executive meetings and I would say the most expensive tool we own is Jenkins and they would say what are you talking about Jenkins is open source we pay for office 365 and we pay for Jira and I said no I would like pound, literally pound the desk and people who know me know that I'm not kidding um, and say <laughs> and say Jenkins is the most expensive expensive piece of software we own because of the time we spend on it um, and so again, that undifferentiated work um, that ends up happening, I think far outweighs the like, oh, well, but there's a plugin to get started, right? It's like, right. that's great in the beginning, but for maintainability um, in the long run, it's, it's, it's not great. Um, and, you're, and you're never guaranteed that that plug, I mean, a lot of times plugins are, are kept up to date, but you're not always guaranteed that that plugin will be around forever. Exactly, exactly. So. Um, and if you, I wanted to go through this one too, but if you had other questions, I don't want to just be on one call. No, just keep, keep, keep <laughs> more questions. We have we have a lot of time. Yeah, so this is an interesting one called uh, from from Slant.co, which I have no idea who they are, but it's it's some interesting things that they allowed people to comment on. Um, and it's interesting. This, this just common questions makes me piqued my interest. I don't know when this is from. Is there a date on it? I don't see a date. But it's interesting because, okay, we're not number one. I don't know who number one was. I guess we can go look. But what are the best continuous integration services with Docker support? And look at this flip, right? Right. Between the five and one. That is a central thing to me because, again, I'm not going to necessarily claim that we're smarter than anybody else. But, like, when we built GitLab CI, was right as Docker was becoming the industry standards. And because of that, we built it, like, with Docker support from the ground up. And... Lucky or smart doesn't matter, but like because that happened, <laughs> um, like we have this advantage, I think now that we can just move at the modern speed of development, move in a cloud native way. Support right. Docker the way de developers want to support Docker. And, um, and not the. Go ahead. Go ahead. Would you see that? I mean, like we, we, when we started doing that, when Docker was coming about, and now you see in you know, the announcements of Jenkins last year that they have their cloud native initiative and it's, it's trying to. Um, do that same thing, but yeah, you know, a few years delayed. Well, and well, and honestly, I think they're doing it in the right way, right? Because I think um, with many other like industry changes that have happened over time uh, since Jenkins was created, it's been bolt on, right? Like we saw that Jenkins file thing was kind of like, well, bolt it onto Jenkins, mm -hmm. and we'll make it work because like now, like your build as code is a thing. But with Docker and the move towards cloud native, like I believe, obviously, because I'm at GitLab and we believe it, and <laughs> and I, I believe it. That's one of the reasons that GitLab, right? It's kind of self fulfilling, but that like cloud native is a, like a tectonic shift. And Jenkins themselves, I think, believes that too, because they said, forget another bolt on to make make it better. Like we're going to do Jenkins X, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're going to to make a cloud native Jenkins. Like that to me says, yes, that's the right way to go. Um, and like you said, they're behind and, and we got to stay ahead of them, but <laughs> or right. try to stay ahead of them. Um, and, that's, and that's critical. So then, then there's a lot of these comments um, below that I think bring up really interesting um, things. Um, so like free and open source, right? We're both free and open source, which is amazing. Love it. Um, like open wins. I, I really like that. The, the first pro on the Jenkins side is safe to store key environmental variables. So 
Um, we also have the ability to like encrypt at rest your environmental variables, but we want to have like a more first class HashiCorp vault integration. And so that's one way, one that actually speaks to me and, and to our vision directly. Um, because I, I think there's a plugin for Jenkins that does vault. Like we want to just bring it into GitLab natively because everybody should be using vault for their secrets and like credential rotation and all that great stuff. Okay. Um, Again, pro on the Jenkins side, a lot of resources and tools available, right? It's been around since 2004. Because of that, there is just more, um, you know, stuff to consume about it, right? And right. that's why we have a Ty Davis and a product marketing <laughs> team, <laughs> right? Yeah. At GitLab to try and close that gap. Um, but I, I would even say, you know, we, we, yeah, I'm trying to close that gap and provide more materials, but you look at what you're looking at right now, slant.co, and, and the fact that we're, you know, being featured on this and doing comparison shows, you know, how, how prevalent that we're becoming quickly because yeah. someone's taking the time to take Jenkins and compare it against us. And we've been around yeah. for you know, only a few amount of years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then again, I think I, I'm just, and again, I'm now I'm probably biasing like my, myself towards GitLab, but I, I just think that our file based configuration is so critical. It just opens up um, a world of doing uh, DevOps the right way. Um, you know, that's how Travis does it. It's how drones drone does it. It's how circle does it. It's how code fresh does it. Like that's because that's the way to do it. Um, and again, Jenkins can do that, but like there's a lot of, there's a lot of still, Oh, but you got to set it up as a pipeline job. Oh, and you got to tell it where the repository is. Oh, and you got to do it, right. Like those right. stringing to get those little things, those little cuts of, stringing together applications um, can, can hurt. Yeah. Um, then on the con section, again, there's a lot more of this. I'll put, I'll put the links to this in the video description below. That's a very easy thing for me to say. Um, <laughs> because there's a lot more that I'm not going over. Um, and the, but the cons are very interesting to me, right? Like poor plug-in quality that sometimes are difficult to combine, right? Like this idea of combining the plugins together and plugins that do different things or do kind of the same thing um, is is really bad. And then you don't, and you don't, again, it, this is an anti-pattern in my mind to how we should be building software and deploying software, which is there should be a single source of truth, which is your defined job, right? Whereas with Jenkins files, you might say, call this plugin, right? And then all right. that plugins code is running. And who, you don't really know what it's doing. And so again, it might have saved you time uh, to begin with, right, it would save time to say, I want to build Maven, give me the Maven plugin. Right. But it's better to say, well, I had to write Maven install in my GitLab CI script. And, oh, actually, I need another Maven variable. And I can just do that right in my script. Oh, wait, I need to run this command first, right? And, and just, you're at the, if you're relying on the plugin, you're, you're relying on their way of doing it rather than your way of doing it um which can be good and can be bad <laughs> i think it's bad <laughs> um and then just the, the unstable lack of integration qa process right so like jenkins jenkins itself guarantees zero plugins to work i think i could be wrong about that there may be some plugins that are theirs um really to get any assurance on plugins you it's my understanding again this could all be wrong but that's where like CloudBees comes in heavily to like help support Jenkins and the plugin mm -hmm. ecosystem. Uh, but even then, there's only a subset of the plugins that, that the folks at CloudBees support. Again, if I'm wrong, happy to be told I'm wrong, but that's my understanding of it. Okay. And um, that to me is, is, is a little scary to like kind of, again, bet my like the ICD pipeline on. I'd rather know I'm starting from a node 8 Docker image, I'm running npm install, and then I'm running a deploy. And this is how it works. Rather than there's this plugin and this plugin, and if we update Jenkins and this plugin breaks, I've now got to go figure it out uh, for myself or roll Jenkins back. And that's, again, as a Jenkins administrator, I had that happen to me all the time. Um, you update one thing and it breaks another. Um, whereas with GitLab, it's a single application that we support everything that it can do. Um, and the update is going to, you know, be supported. You know, every everything that we decide to support, um, and you can see this in like our public issues and and mm -hmm. changes to our agent, the GitLab runner, 
um, my engineering team will push back really hard. I'm like, because if we accept something, we accept supporting it, right? Um, yep. and so and so that that's a big that's a heavy bar right right um, and, and I, I mean I've seen an actual issue where that that back and forth happened it was you know uh, an outside vendor wanting support and it just that there was you know it's a great it would be great but the pushback was it was just there's a lot of time spent um, having to you know, man that yep yep so anyway that's I, I don't know if I answered your question completely no you did <laughs> Um, you did complete. I mean, it, it, obviously, there's a lot of working parts to everything. Um, like you, like you mentioned, it's not a feature to feature um, because you know they're both, uh, you know, one and the same, but you know, different tools at the, at the same time. So, um, you know, I guess I, I, another question I'd have is if 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 you have you know an, an organization or someone that wants to you know, um, and we don't have to, we're not going to go into technical. Of this is how you do it and everything, but just they're they're thinking about moving off of Jenkins to GitLab. Um, what would be your, your recommendations for that um, and just how to go about that? Yeah. So, I mean, again, I think that for an organization that's got, you know, entrenched with Jenkins, it's going to be hard, right? There is no rip and replace strategy for that, for a large enterprise. Um, and so I think I can tell you, I'm going to tell you again how I did it and then how I think mm -hmm. other people do it. The thing I did, and I was a, this was a smaller company, and so this might not work for uh, for our large large enterprises. But the, the thing I did at our at our company, once I had realized like this wasn't going to work and it wasn't scalable, and it was the most expensive piece of software we owned. Um, as I said, look, if you're if, and I had it was an interest, it was a contractor uh, to the U.S. federal government, and so there are all these very different teams that were doing very different things, little projects that would spin up and spin down. Right. Um, and so because of that, um, there's lots of different things being built. And I said, so I said to all those teams, you know, I was in charge of DevOps for the, the company as a whole. I said, look, if your Jenkins build works, I'm happy. Like, that's great. Like, have at it. If it breaks, you can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can, you can, I'll let you, I'll help you get in and Jenkins and you can try and fix it. Um, if you want like my DevOps team's help, like let us show you and like build a CI CD pipeline for you. Now, again, that's not a strategy that maybe works, but I think the end of that strategy is the most critical answer to your question, which is like, just try it. Like if you have an innovation team or you have a team that's leading the charge for GitLab in general, like once you try it, it, it becomes very obvious how different they are. This thing that sounds like a marketing pitch of like, well, it's hard to feature to feature. <laughs> you'll, like you'll realize right away if you just build one project with it like it's right. a very different way of looking at the world and one that i think more aligns with the way folks develop software today in 2019 um again happy to be proven wrong on that happy to be like challenged on that like we'll put i'll also put links um below to our what we call our verified direction page so we call ci verify GitLab for anybody watching this um as one of the stages of the devops life cycle um, there's a direction page that has like kind of all my thoughts about where we need to go with CI because, of course, as a product manager, I don't see us as done or, or any of this solved. <laughs> um, and I'd love to hear feedback on where I'm wrong. Um, but that, that's what I think. Like, just try it <laughs> is like the, the most, the, the best advice I could give anyone because, A, it's open source, so you could literally just try it. Right. GitLab.com has free runners, so you can literally just try it. It's actually... The first CI job I ever built was as a free GitLab.com user, um, and and yeah, so I think I think that's one. And then the way I've seen enterprises transition, again, is is in a number of different ways. I don't think there's any large enterprise that's said, okay, we're today we're ripping and replacing, and, and Jenkins is turning off, and, and GitLab's turning on. There's folks that have done, okay, all new projects are coming on to GitLab, mm -hmm. or we have a cloud native initiative. And that is going to be in GitLab, right? And so like, it's natural as we're trying to like, because a lot of it again is managing change <laughs> more than managing the tools. Like, I mean, that's, and that's not shocking anyone. <laughs> um, and so like inject into this change management, this is the new way of, of, of deploying software or building and deploying software too. Um, and put that under the umbrella of, to be buzzword compliant, digital transformation, or whatever you're gonna call it, but like the idea that like we need to change the way we operate to adapt to the modern world, 
one of the pieces of that is a small tooling change, but one that I think will have a big impact. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking a Slack question and <laughs> yeah. jumping Turn on there. Really, <laughs> hey, but I really do it, and it, it helps you know answer um, questions that we we get a lot from people that are looking at GitLab. So um, appreciate it. Thanks for jumping on real quick. Uh, we'll like like Brendan said, we will put um, some of the links that he mentioned in the uh, YouTube description below and comment, reach out. Um, we want to hear your feedback. Give your feedback. You know. Uh, fact check them if if you want to so uh, appreciate it thank you brennan and i will talk to you soon all right bye